Ah, you welcome well along to a lesson on quality. Um, right, quality systems within airspace are, uh, oh, that's what I think. Right, what I'll do is, uh, I'll just do a quick uh, a quick intro, then I'll, put the power, I'll share the, the PowerPoint screen and we'll go through that. What I've done is, I have put on um, the, let's have a look for me, I've put on the PowerPoint, um, and if we go through this one, let's have a look. Do the it. So if you look at this one, um, which isn't working, there we go. Right. Hopefully you can see that. Right. Uh, so if we look at quality control from a uh, maintenance perspective, um, your learn objectives are you need to know what a quality standard and a quality system is. Okay. Now. I'm going to start this. If this is a question on the assessment or on assignment number five for aircraft maintenance, the first thing is right is that um, you need to know what quality control is. Quality control can be defined as techniques, activities that are used to fulfil requirements to achieve quality. Now, when you start talking about quality control, it is really unavoidable to use the word quality 14 million times. Okay. Now, basically try and avoid doing that um, and I've been teaching this now for about seven years and without fail one person gets really really kind of just type in everything they find they go on the internet they find any, anything about quality right now there is an absolute metric ton of stuff out there on the internet about quality some of it is not relevant to aerospace engineering I must stop the emails coming in because I've been halfway through the presentation. Right, sorry. Um, right. Um, do not fill your assignment with endless repetition of the following general phrases. So, right, there you go. Then you look. There's a little picture of Grumpy up there, right? Um, and I got, I got one year. I got about about twenty, thirty assignments in that were like this. If you have a read of this while I'm rattling on, uh, you'll just see. You, you can imagine reading that like like. 50 times, you know. Um, the same basic statement, yeah. So you're repeating yourself and just endless uses of the quality system is, you know, you know the, the, the quality system is there to provide it's written down in quality procedures and the quality manual. Are very important to achieve quality standards, sense of good quality procedures, maintain a quality system. People make careers out of this, you know. And I, I, I imagine somewhere there's a quality manager who's not very good at that job. In some fact, we just keep just bumping this stuff out. Um, you know, it doesn't mean anything, right? What does quality actually mean? What, what do those procedures mean? What is quality control, right? So, within the aviation industry, it's interpreted as fitness for purpose at minimum cost. And what that means is the main thing for aircraft engineering is EASA, EASA European, Ag European Aviation Safety Agency. Uh, part 145. It used to be called JAR 145. If you see anything J online which is JAR 145, it's not relevant anymore but it's still useful. Okay, so it hasn't changed that much between JAR and Part 145. It's just when we went into Europe from the CEA it became Part 145 and, and I'm not going to go into that but that might seem alien to you, that, that, that name Part 145. Basically it's like uh, it's almost like a qualification of a badge, right? So if I stand up now, you can see that on there, you've got, there you go, Newcastle Aviation Academy. I'm just going to get the meaning of stuff like that. In fact, no, I'll just keep going, sorry. Right, so Newcastle Aviation Academy, on there we have a little badge there that says um, uh, UK 145 which is our centre number. What that means, now it's not actually a badge you wear on your shoulder, that's just something that we put on the uniforms so that um, I think Tim went need something on the arms. I don't know. Yeah. But what, what is it? It is something that is awarded to you. So you know how you do your BTEC and um, you know um, we have to, I always say oh, that, that we have to, this has to go through BTEC, you know, and I need to get this through BTEC. Um, Right, so, okay, the joys of uh, teaching from home there, eh? right, so where uh, well, we will just go down to quality control there, uh, right, and we'll go from slideshow, yeah, right, okay, sorry about that, just we've decided to have a conversation at, at, at 14 million decibels with this one, right, 
Um, in other words, products, so we're, we're talking about 145, we were talking about um, BTEC and things like that. Similar to that, in that BTEC put a system out there and say, you will do it this way. And if we do it this way, we, we are then allowed to award you BTEC qualifications and they will check us to make sure we are doing it their way. That's basically what quality is, okay? And it's making sure that if you get a BTEC in Newcastle Aviation Academy, or you get the BTEC at Swansea Aviation Academy or wherever, you know, or Hartlepool, then you've done you've done the same stuff, you are at the same standard, and then anyone wanting to take you on an AG course, if you've done aeronautical engineering and you've done it properly and it's been assessed properly, you should be able to handle um, at the end of two years with us, you should be able to handle degree level study in aeronautical engineering and you sit in the classroom and you go, boom, right, um, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, so what does that mean? Can you imagine if, if you lot didn't do maths, right, and you didn't you didn't do um, um you, you didn't do um, integration or differentiation with maths, and then you sat on an HE course and you sat down and somebody went, okay, we're going to just differentiate that now, or there's some maths up there, and you wouldn't be able to access that level of learning because you hadn't been taught properly or you you were in the wrong place. So there's lots and lots of applications of quality. It's basically quality to make sure things are done properly. Right. Um, right. So you've got a quality control system is normally laid down. There's a list of requirements that must be met to demonstrate to customers and that outside agencies that the product sales can some consistently achieve the required quality standard. I've broken your rules there. How many times do I mention quality there? The quality system is designed, so it, it, it's generally the, the design of quality system and the write within the quality manual, yeah. And then the quality department's job is to make sure that people are following the system. It is as basic as that. That's all you need to do. You don't need to write loads about it. You just need to make basic statements like that. And then you need to apply it to aerospace. So the hard bit is applying it to aerospace. Right, so we'll just wash through you. Detail of the quality system is normally formulated, or formulated is posh word for written down. Okay, in a quality manual. Right. The usual system adopted is British Standard 5750 or International Standard or ISO 9000 or 9001. Sometimes you see plaques on the side of, of walls on companies and it will say they are ISO 9001 compliant. That's all it means. It means that ISO 9001 have come to see that they do everything properly. Uh, I don't know, pick something. If you were, make, if, if you were I don't know, making a little plastic buttons that go on xbox controllers okay so there you go there's there's an xbox controller there right if your company makes the little plastic button right iso 9001 they're not um specialists in plastic button making they're specialists in quality what they'll do is they'll come and evaluate your system and say how do you make sure the green's the right shade oh well we'll have a we'll test it we'll check them all will come through and there's, there's uh, edith the assets at the end of production now and she's got a shade in the end to check that it's the right shade of green how do you make sure that the button's the right size to fit into the hole? Uh, oh, well, um, uh, Peter here, he, he has a little button checker thing and he puts them through this gauge and then uh, before we send them out to the uh, to the, the controller maker or before we send them to Microsoft, um, Dave here checks that all the right size. Yeah, so as long as you can prove you've got a system for doing it, you know what the system is, then they'll award you, they have a certain criteria that you have to meet and they'll award you 9001. And as well as that, They'll look at your past history uh, and you'll see how many customer complaints you've had back, how many, how much scrap, how much scrap you make, how many, uh, how much of your stuff goes out there and is then proven to be faulty, things like that. And if that number is very low, they'll reward you 9001 or, or BS 5750. Um, and it's it's like if you think of builders on check inverted. Have you seen check inverted on the back of builders vans? Uh, it's a bit of a system like that, or gas gas safe. You see all builders and tradesmen when they have their vans going around, or plumbers, on the back of the van they'll have loads of stickers. And if you if next time you're driving around, um, if you look at the stickers on the back of vans, there's all the different quality systems out there. Okay, so each industry basically has their own sort of standard, and, and you have to go through tests to make sure they're meeting the industry standard. What would that mean to you? Um, Right, okay, 
So on a pre-flight inspection, the components found to be defective must be replaced. So you're going down on a pre-flight inspection, right? Um, the component, you can get it from the stores, but it needs to be, we've done this before with this, uh, the quarantine stores bit of the stores procedure is a bit like a quality check, okay? So you're making sure that it's um, fit to do the job it was designed to do. How do you know it's past the quality check? Because it's got an ERSAT form one. So that's one example of a quality system in aircraft engineering. Right, now, I'm not going to go through this whole PowerPoint because that would be waste. You can read this on your own. It's available on Moodle. I'm going to work through the PowerPoint now to the end thing. Okay. So all I want you to do at home, I want you to read the PowerPoint. Most of it is just introducing you to the quality system. Okay, all right, just to try and get you kind of written down and uh, now this bit here, this this slide here is just to give you, I don't want this on the assignment, right? You know, you don't have to go about quality control at this level of detail. This is just to let you know about how it, how it works in, in, the, uh, in the workplace, okay? Now producers and, and managers, yeah, their responsibilities. That's a bit more health and safety. It's a bit like health, sorry, not health and safety. It's like health and safety when they have different responsibilities, right? But what I'm really interested in is quality control within the aviation industry, okay? So, ER Part 145 approved for maintenance organisations. Yeah, it's a maintenance thing. It's all to do with spanners and keeping aircraft airworthy. So, the, the, the overarching term that you hear for quality in aviation is generally a term airworthiness, and that is is the aircraft safe to fly? So, a bit more like that. Now, really what I'm looking for is that you know what an internal and external quality audit is. So, and why one is better than the others. And this links into distinction point two, but for now it is part of the class point as well. Right, um, the quality department, what they will do is they they will go along and they will, if you're in a hangar like this, right, they'll go along and make sure that, uh, let's say the power set over there, uh, the power set's the right type for the aircraft and it's been uh, safety checked within the last year. So you know any calibration things that we did when we had to calibrate the tension down and things and calibrate the torque wrench? That's what we're looking at. The quality department will, will put a system in place to get those tools calibrated. That's one thing we do. Let's look at what they do, okay? Um, so, and uh, they'll also check the forms. You know when I said well, with the aircraft manual, uh, you, it's your responsibility to make sure that you're using the most up-to-date version of the manual. That's what the quality department might do for you. They might check the up-to-date, the manuals are up-to-date. They might ensure the technicians are in up-to-date for the type approval. So uh, if you've got a B1 license, they'll make sure that your B1 license is still valid. And then if you've got any up-to-date, like let's say they brought in a new aeroplane, and it's the Airbus A340-900 series, and you're only qualified on the 800 series, to make sure that you've done the relevant course to upgrade the 900 series. Um, aircraft paperwork has been recorded accurately, so what they'll do is they'll, they'll take samples of the paperwork. If that's online on on, um, on, uh, on e-tech logs now, they might look at the e-tech logs and download them and say, oh, okay, has that, been, has that been done properly? Uh, they'll make sure things have been signed for and the, the paper has been done correctly. Um, uh, performing audits of component logs on the aircraft, so they might look, they might go out to the aircraft and say, right, this engine should have fuel filter serial number 9532 to it. They might physically go out to the aircraft and check about maybe five or six parts randomly around the aeroplane and make sure whatever the component log says is there, is actually fit with the accident. The main thing with aircraft is you're changing parts all the time. It happens all the time and making sure that that part doesn't get recorded, the lifing for that part gets recorded properly. So it's all tied in with, tied in with lifing accounts as well. Okay, so um, the check life records, records are uh, accurate up to date for, for the parts on the aircraft. They won't check the whole aeroplane, that would be a waste of time. What they'll do is they'll take a random sample um, a bit like to do with what, what uh, BTEC does with your assignments, they won't, don't check every single assignment. What they'll do is they'll, they'll ask for a sample of assignments randomly and they'll say we'll make sure these have been assessed properly, marked properly and then basically we're not giving you distinctions for nothing. What they'll do on the airspace side is they'll do um, 
and uh, it'll take the 145 procedures to look at them and say, right, this part should have been checked in quality stores, it should have been fitted, the life of the camp should have been uploaded from the, the form one to the um, um, tech log, sorry, the component log on the aircraft. Right, so the other thing we might do on the service point of view, they might go out, if you're doing a daily check on an, on an X-Wing, <laughs> Right? If you're doing a daily check, they might go around and someone follows you with a clipboard and make sure that you, or they might, you might do the daily check and then you might get the paperwork, the procedure for the daily check and go around after you and make sure you've checked all the bits. Or they might ask you on a daily, or they might follow you around on a daily check and, make, and just take you off to say, yes, this was done, yes, that was done. You might get a CEA auditor visits your hangar and then follows you and says, right, okay, uh, can you tell me um you know when you last train to use that equipment and how are you trained to use that um you know it might be can you tell me um uh, where you look in the manual to find out where that was faulty or something or more more realistically they'll probably follow you around on a daily check check your license and make sure your license up to date and ask you when you had your last update training um so for example if there's a software upgrade on the aircraft and the displays are different and the way to do and the way to test them is different. They might ask you, oh, do you know about the new test procedure for the A320 uh, MFD D2? And you'll go, uh, yeah, right? And then hopefully you do, hopefully. And if and if it, it doesn't mean if you don't know that, uh, then you get the sack, right? It means that the quality system, the main thing I'm gonna tell you is the quality system is there to protect you as well as being as as your customers, which are essentially the passengers. So a quality audit, someone comes around and goes, you didn't know that and you should know that, so you need, here's a training course to, so you know that, right? It's a bit like, it, it is linked with safety, it's heavily linked with safety, okay? Because airworthiness is in, ensuring that aircraft can operate safely, right? Um, so ER SAPOT 145 quality checks are to make sure that, that you are safely maintaining the aircraft within legal boundaries. And it is a legal thing, you know, um, you, uh, you can be prosecuted if you're doing things outside of Part 145 regulations, you know, there's, there's things like that. The criteria doesn't ask you to go into that level of detail about what would happen to you if you didn't. So you don't need to worry about that. It's not, it's not the same as a health and safety uh, criteria. Please don't make this a health and safety assignment, right? And where you have to go into that level of detail with it. This is just one criteria you have to meet. And all I want to know is, um, what are the functions and role of, of an aerospace quality department? And that slide there in front of you basically tells you what to do. But you can't just put that, you have to put a bit of background to what quality is, okay? So you need to mention quality manuals and quality procedures. Quality procedures, written quality manuals, it's the employer's job to, um, and tell the employees what the quality procedures are and where to find them and how to follow them. And then it's the quality department's job to basically carry out audits. Two different types of audit. Okay, you've got, just going back to there, um, right, just on the bottom bit you've got, I'll just move around the mouse there. You've got external audits and internal audits, right? Which one do you think is better? Okay. The external audit is better, and the reason for that, right, it's all written on there, the quality assurance, if it's independent from the work, if I went up to, I don't know, I'll pick somebody in the class, right, we'll say I don't know, the name's Graham, right, and you're making, a, you're filing a bit of work, and if I said to Graham, uh, well, when we did, we were filing in the workshop, uh, is that flat? And Graham wants to go home early because he thought he's on, okay, right, so he's like, yeah, it's flat. How flat is it? And then then give it to me and I go, well, that's not flat. So Graham's the internal quality audit, which is, is that flat? And he, because he's involved in the work and it makes more work for him by not being flat, right? He's just going to say, or the, or the temptation is there to say, oh, it's flat. Yeah. Um, now, that means for the company that wants a flat piece of metal, that's the end quality product they want is a flat piece of metal. For that company, it's no good asking Graham if it's flat, because he's just going to tell you it's flat, right? And then he can go on. It, it, and now, if you have an ex, now, but the internal audit would be okay if Graham, you know, if you had, um, 
aircraft to see if that aircraft's safe to fly, Graham's gonna think, well, if I see it's safe to fly and it crashes, then well that could be bad, you know. So internal internal audits are still worth doing, they still have the place. And um, so you know, Graham wants to do a good job, so he's gonna go, oh, yeah, well actually it's not flat. I'll go back and do it again. So it might you might pick it up on an internal audit. With an external audit, somebody like me comes along, checks Graham's work, well, that's not flat. I've got I'm, I've got no I've got no kind of reason to see it is flat. So there's no, it's, it's basically, no, if you heard that term before, it's no skin off my nose if it's not flat. It doesn't cause me any extra work. So I'm more likely to be more critical. And that's the thing, that's the key point. External audits are more likely to be more critical, so they are more effective in finding things that are wrong. Because they don't, it, it doesn't affect them if it is wrong. They don't have to fix it. It's no extra work for them. Just walk along with a clipboard and go, that's not right. And you go, oh, right. But they're right, aren't they? You know? So, um, and everyone worries about an audit, everyone panics. Oh, there's an audit coming in. If you're doing your job properly, you shouldn't worry about audits. That's easier said than done. Yeah. And uh, in the modern day and age, when you're asked to, you know, do the job of three people, you know, uh, certainly when I was in the Air Force, my job there would have been a would have been five times more people in the Air Force than was when I was in there. Uh, and you were asked to do actually more paperwork and more stuff that you had. Well, have you complied with this? Have you complied with that? Have you complied with this? And they like, you know, um, and shortly the order comes along. And basically, you, you haven't been cutting corners, but you kind of went, you, you had so much to comply with, you were always worried in case you'd gone somewhere. I spent the whole time worried in case I wasn't doing something right, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't very easy to follow. Back in the midst of time when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Right. Uh, okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you get this, if this goes on YouTube today, uh, there's Zoom meetings this week, so please take advantage of the Zoom meetings. Uh, it should be, uh, it should be all right. Um, any questions? Email us. Um, that's that's quality. That's as peerless as I can make quality. Unfortunately, read the part. Oh, there's also a document on. Um, Moodle, which is a bit more in depth than the PowerPoint, and uh, you can read that as well. What I do not want, you, you must not do, is to cut and paste this. You read it and then put it down. It doesn't have to be perfect what you're handing, remember that. If you miss out the odd word and you haven't quite got it quite right, as long as you've got the meaning of it right and you've understood it, that's okay, right? And, and you can't, this is a really big one now. When we get into paperwork, there's not as much out there on on websites and things for you to read and look at. So you only, you've only really got my PowerPoints to go off, but you must read the PowerPoint and do your own version, right? It doesn't have to be as long as the PowerPoint, okay? Quality, I'm only after a couple of paragraphs, maybe two or three paragraphs on, okay? Mention and teach me, uh, we'll do a little checklist for quality then, right? Okay, if you're listening now, uh, um, what I need to do is mention, uh, Quality procedures, uh, they're written, they go to quality manual, and then they, that's how they get, that, that's where they're kept. Okay, so a quality system is, is a collection of quality procedures that goes in the quality manual, uh, which is given out to the, the workforce. Then you need to mention um, the, an example of in aerospace, which is the, the aerospace quality system is EASA part 145. Okay, and then you need to give us a couple of examples of that in, in practice. And then you, then you finish it off by saying the quality system, the quality department is generally there to organise audits and tell us the difference between an internal and an external audit. It's all you need to do and make that nice and compact. Okay, I don't need loads on that. Right. Um, you do need to give some examples. And the examples are, um, there's a few there. Okay, if you find any other ones out there, please put them in. Right, thanks so much for that. Um, I'm stop recording now, I can't remember how to do that. Well.